First off, let's show the prep work needed to make fresh squeezed lemonade. First cut the lemons in half and juice them. Juicy! All right, just use a strainer and pour the juice through. That way you can separate the seeds and the pulp. Here's how you make the sugar syrup for the lemonade. We're first going to start by adding a cup of sugar, and then half a cup of water. You could do three fourths cup of water as well, but I like the syrup to be less watery. Just keep stirring that sugar on a medium low heat until the sugar is dissolved enough to where the syrup is pretty clear. Just keep stirring it. And let it cool for about 15 minutes before you pour it into your container. Make sure not to refrigerate this container right away because it could crack it. Alright, let's get started on peeling the potatoes for the creamy, cheesy, garlic mashed potatoes. Get all of them peeled and you should be good to go. Now get them all chopped up into quarters. There's a little bit of a rotten spot in the potato. You can go ahead and cut that part out later. And if you want these to cook even faster, you could cut them into eighths. There you have it. Now cover those potatoes in some water. And turn your burner up to high to get that water boiling. Now I'll show you how to salt brine the chicken.
you're going to want to add two cups of cold water. And then we're just going to heat up two more cups of water along with half a cup of salt and dissolve it into it. Just keep stirring it on medium to medium high heat. We're also going to add a quarter cup of sugar. Keep heating that and dissolving them together. And I've decided to add another chicken thigh and another cup of cool water. The salt solution looked a little bit thick to me. You don't want to get your chicken over salted. Then just pour the water that we heated up into the cool water. That way it doesn't cook the chicken, but the salt is all dissolved into it. And you can reuse this water with a, another batch of chicken if you're going to do it right away. Now that it's been brining for three hours, we're going to get it out onto the rack. But first we rinse it. We want to get that salt off of there so it's not overly salty. You just want the salt that's soaked into the meat. Putting it on the strainer like this lets the water drain out underneath. And we're just going to take paper towels and dry off the excess moisture. We don't want all that water while it's cooking. Try not to slosh the chicken around too much because you don't want to splatter those salmonella juices all over. Alright, now I'm going to score alongside the bone, because this helps it cook a little faster and more evenly. You can see I scoured along each side of the bone, and then underneath, so it's kind of separated from the meat a bit. And this will separate it more as it cooks. This is optional, but I think this does indeed help the cooking process quite a bit. I would recommend it. This is also kind of the method of how to get the bone out of the chicken. Just watch your fingers as you do this. And we're just going to glaze it with some avocado oil. And use your spice of choice on the chicken. I'm using a mesquite barbecue seasoning.
and the oven has been preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Just flip those over. Try to use the same hand that you handled the chicken every time and don't touch anything else. Just get more oil on the skin side. You don't need a lot, just enough to glaze it and to make that seasoning stick to it. Give it a nice protection while it cooks. And get more of your seasoning on the skin side as well. Then toss that chicken into an oven preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And just put a little salt in the pots that you're cooking your potatoes. And I'm doing some corn on the cob as well. And just bring it to a boil and reduce it slightly. The corn doesn't take as long as the potatoes maybe about five minutes but the potatoes take maybe 15 to 20 minutes to get soft and while you're waiting for those potatoes to cook you could get the garlic ready again just use the flat part of the knife to crush it and then you can remove the shell easier Somewhat easier, but sometimes you need a second crush. And just pick the pieces of the shell off of it, set it aside. And in this batch, I'm going to do about five cloves of garlic. But it's just a matter of preference how garlicky you want it to be. And once the corn is soft, I'm going to remove it from the cob. Either hold it with tongs or just fork it to hold it in place. And just slice along the kernels to get it off of there. Some people like corn on the cob, but I personally like to take it off because then you can mix it with the butter and spices easier this way. ready to return that to the pot. And it's been about 20-25 minutes. Just check the potatoes by stabbing it with a fork. If it comes apart easily, it should be done. It does look like it's done. Then you could do a tablespoon or two of butter into the corn. A little bit of salt. And a little bit of ground black pepper. After 25 minutes, take the chicken out of the oven. The skin's looking nice. Now I'll flip it back over with the skin side down. We're gonna start putting on that barbecue sauce. For the first coat on the bottom, I like to go a little bit lighter on it. 
just do a single coat because later we're going to have to flip over the bottom side down and uh, if you put too much on it, it just ends up dripping down below and it's just a waste so I just lightly glaze the bottom a single time. And at the same time when you're doing the first coat of barbecue sauce, you want to increase the temperature of the oven up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're going to pop it back in that 450 degree oven for 7 minutes. Meanwhile, we can process our cooked potatoes. Just drain almost all the water out and maybe leave just a little bit still in the pot. That little bit of water in there helps you mash it up. Maybe like half a cup of milk. And we're going to add the garlic that we chopped up. Just using a garlic press here and then scraping it off with a knife. Like I said, it's just how garlicky you want it to be. And we'll add probably about four tablespoons of butter. And mozzarella cheese. I don't really measure this, I just put what I feel like looks good. And really, you could use any type of cheese for this recipe. Whatever you feel like. Get that all integrated. It's a good idea to do maybe half a teaspoon of salt at a time, and then keep tasting it until you feel it's the right level of saltiness. What I like to do is put some dill weed in the potatoes. This was introduced to me by a friend of mine and I quite enjoy it. Got a good taste. You can see the cheese is all melted into the potatoes now. If the potatoes aren't smooth enough, you can add a little bit more milk. Alright, it's been seven minutes. Let's take them out again. Now we're going to flip them back skin side up, and we're going to leave it like this for the rest of the cook cycle. Again, do a nice even layer of barbecue sauce on top. I've found that making the coating thin and even helps the cook process quite a bit and forms a nice crust on the chicken.
And this will go back in the 450 degree oven for another seven minutes. And then just keep your burners at the lowest setting to keep your sides warm while you wait for the chicken to finish. After seven minutes, we'll take it out again. Looking good. Then we're going to do one final coating before it goes back in the oven for 10 more minutes. And this coating is going to be a little bit thicker because of the longer cook time. Get the spread as even as you can. And I like to make sure every little part of it is covered. And then back in the oven for the final 10 minute cook. This is about a 45 to 48 minute cook time total. And this is the result. Beautiful. Now just plate it up and enjoy. Now let's finish making the lemonade from scratch. We're going to take about three tablespoons of the lemon juice. Maybe four if you want it to be extra lemony. And here's our sugar syrup we made earlier. Maybe want to do four or five tablespoons just slightly more than there's lemon in there to cut through the sour, but it's really a matter of preference. Sometimes I like a very sour lemonade. And then just pour water in. I pour it just a little bit before the top and then taste it so you can adjust it a bit more. Make sure to mix it up really well. Give it a taste. Pretty sour so I'm just going to add a little bit more of the syrup. Two gob gobs of it. Give it another taste. It's got a good taste. Big thanks again to Alistair for making this video possible. I'll have his channel linked down below, you can check him out and subscribe. And bon appetit!